Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling in the state of Maine and we're going to cover a good variety of things. We're going to start with the HSLDA website which you can become a member of if you have any legal questions or legal concerns and they can help you with those sorts of things. I am not an attorney but I can read to you what their website says. Um, there are two options for homeschooling in the state of Maine. One option is if you choose to provide your child with home instruction, you'll need to follow these requirements. And one would be to file a one-time notice of intent. You must send a one-time written notice of intent to your local school superintendent. This notice needs to be sent within 10 days of you starting to homeschool your student. It is not necessary to use any particular form, but HSL DA members may wish to use our specifically designed main notice of intent form located below. Your notice of intent must include the following information, name, address, and signature of the parent or guardian, student's name and age, the date that the home instruction began or will begin, a statement that you will provide instruction to your student for at least 175 days a year, a statement that you will cover the required subject, and a statement that you will submit a year-end assessment for your student. Main law says that you must keep a copy of this notice of intent for your records. If the commissioner of education asks to see the notice, you must provide it to him or her. You have to send a letter every year after by September 1st to the local school superintendent. So there's that. And you have to keep a copy of that. You have to teach them for the 175 days a year. You must teach all of the following subjects, English, Math, Science, Social Studies, PE and Health, Library Skills, Fine Arts, uh, Main Studies in one grade between grades 6 and 12, and Computer Proficiency in one grade between grades 7 and 12. You have to submit a year-end assessment, and that needs to be the results of a National Standardized Achievement Test. I don't know if that's free or the results of a test developed by local school officials. Homeschoolers do not commonly use this type of assessment or letter stating that your child's progress has been reviewed and is acceptable. It can be from a main certified teacher, a support group that has a main certified teacher helping to conduct your child's review, or an advisory board that includes two homeschool teachers and one school official that you can arrange with your school district before the school year begins. The advisory board option is commonly used. This assessment is due by September 1st. Keep a copy of the assessment you submit for your records. Option two, homeschooling as a private school. Maine allows parents to join together and function as a private school. The state recognizes as a providing equivalent instruction, the requirements of a private school must follow to be recognized, listed H, S, L, D, A's, legal analysis of Maine state law. You can that applies the main school's attendance law by enrolling your child in one of these schools. And you have to still teach them the required subjects. And you can use a template, template to submit required paperwork. And then there's more information on that. And then you can go to the main Board of Education site. And then it has links that you can click on that have the required forms and laws and you can print those out for your records and put a date on them and home instruction resources I don't know I didn't think they had too many resources but if you're going to keep that you're probably going to want to keep a binder or a portfolio to put those in and a lot of people keep those and there's a lot of variety of different things that you might want to keep in a binder or portfolio um, if you're going to homeschool, you're going to probably want to take some assessment or placement tests at the beginning of the year to see where your student is. Even if you homeschooled the year before, you're going to want to probably do this to see what level they're on. They might not be at the same level in reading or in math, and sometimes they don't absorb everything that they learned or they might need to review some things. And here's one of their tests that you could use. And you can use this and the test them and see where they're at and highlight the things that they need to review if there's some things they need to review and this will help you to create a plan for your homeschool year 
there's some um, free assessment tests. She, this lady has free reading tests that you could give them assessment tests there, and you can put that in your portfolio or binder at the beginning of the year. And like I said, this might help you to come up with a plan of what you're going to be teaching them for the year or what grade level. And here's some math tests and with a way to grade it. And these are excellent resources. Um, calendars, you're going to need calendar. You're going to have a tentative calendar where you think these are the days of the year that you plan on having schooling and you can highlight them or X the days that you're going to have school and then put an H for holiday or FT for field trip or use highlight markers. And that will be, and then you'll have another calendar for the days you actually have school because even public schools might have snow days, you know. So, so things come up, but that way you have two calendars, one for the actual days, and you can put that in your portfolio or your binder. And this is IXL, and you can print this out, and it will show you the, um, the curriculum or the what they're going to be doing for the year in math and for your homeschooling. And you can put that in your binder to show this is your plan of the curriculum that you're planning on using. And then you can check it off as you go along. If you're going to be using IXL, I think it's like $20 a month. And they have this in English too. And if you have workbooks that you're going to be doing, maybe you're going to be doing three hours a day at um, a full curriculum website and then an hour a day in a workbook and then some different things. So that way you can have samples of their work in the portfolio or their binder as well. So you might want to print out the contents at the front of the workbook or cut them out and put them in your binder or your portfolio as well to show them that you have created a plan. And there's also ConAcademy.org and it says it is free for everyone, everywhere. And it starts out from pre-K and goes all the way to college and has calculus and things like that. So you can go here to use free curriculum if you like. And if you've never homeschooled before and you're trying to brainstorm and create a list, well, this is an example of a list that you might want to create and put in your portfolio or binder. And you can list your favorite books that you have at home. You might have workbooks from the thrift store even that you could use. Or you can list your favorite websites, online subscription-based program. You can come up with your own headings. And you can brainstorm and choose your favorites and make one list of your favorites. And then go through them and make a list of the ones you actually decided to use. And then... Put it in your binder and then next year you can go back and look at your favorites and decide to choose other ones if you like. So hopefully this helps you. Um, Schoolhouse Rock. Some people have heard of it. Some people haven't. This isn't a full curriculum. This is just music and songs to help with all these different subjects. So if you're going to make lunch and your child needs a break in between things or you need a break to make lunch, They'll listen to these and they will sing along and they are fun. You can find them for free on YouTube. People have playlists and they have math skills. And this is a subject. You can see the multiplication tables. And then they have Grammar Rock, which teaches them about noun verbs and a variety of things in English. And then they have America Rock, which and these are the subjects. Um, it teaches them about the U.S. Constitution, America Revolutionary War, Electoral College, branches of the government, voting for the president, a variety of things. Science, uh, there's two different places for science, and there's a subject, gravity, the solar system, the skeletal system, electricity, just so, so much. Um, there's the other one where it teaches about climate change and recycling and rainforest and oceans and... Um, wind power, gardens, and then there's also the money rock, which teaches them about personal budget and barter, stock exchange, checks, interest and loans. So it's fun for them and it's a variety of subjects and they learn while they're singing along, which is great. And then there's also purplemath.com, which is for older students. I think it's fifth grade all the way up to college and I use this in college. And so, what it does is it, it lists the different things and you can go 
to one of the activities that you might be learning. And you can see there's written instructions as well as videos for them to watch. And some students learn better with videos. So you don't have to hunt for it on YouTube somewhere. It's on purplemath.com. Another great resource is en.childrenslibrary.org. And you can see the name of it is International Children's Digital Library. And you can Google search for that or use the website that you can see in the top left-hand corner. And there are, I think, like over, over 4,000 books. So you click on one, and you go to that, and you want to read it, and you click on it. And then there's a page, and you just click on that to zoom in. And you can turn the page to the left or the right in the upper right-hand corner. And so there are so many books. And some of them, look, you can see the titles more than once. And that is because they might have different editions of the book that came out different years so they might have a more than one edition of the book so another great resource would be homeschool support groups and you could find them they might find out that somebody's homeschooled for years and they have knowledge that you hadn't even considered so that if you join a homeschool group and some of them are free some of them might cost money so you might be able to ask questions and get information if you have books that you're using that you want to donate to another homeschool family that would be the place that you could probably find another family to donate and they probably donate as well so you could probably swap books around they might go on field trips together or do activities together so that might be fun for you um, and as far as a portfolio if you're creating a portfolio some of the things that you might want to put in your binder or portfolio are the placement or assessment tests that you take at the beginning of the year uh, the state homeschool laws that you printed out copies of any forms that you filed and proof that you filed them a couple of the calendars one with a tentative calendar and one with the actual calendar so that helps show you know the different days that you had school you're brainstorming your favorite resources, the actual list of resources that you're going to use, the online curriculum, and if you're using a workbook, the curriculum from there. Any field trips that you go on, like flyers or photos or video or papers that your student wrote, and then the dates on the flyers or the papers showing they went on the field trip, even if they just write their favorite activity about the field trip. So you can put that in there and they'll be reflecting on it. Um, you can print out the contents from websites like IXL or the contents from the workbook they're using. Sample work. Now you might want to showcase their best work or you might want to show progressive work such as your timing their multiplication tables at the beginning of the year. Then you're timing them a couple of months later. Or you can show like a variety of skills if you want to show multiplication tables on one page addition on another, fractions on another, pronouns on one page, nouns on another. You can do a variety of skills. And if you have your student help you do this, then they can look back and take pride in their work. And you might want to write little assessments every now and then or have them self-evaluate. And then when you write assessments, then you should put a positive twist on the assessment. Like what a great attitude they had, even though they're behind in their reading and at the end of the year you can put oh they went up five levels in their reading and we think it was because of their positive attitude that they were able to achieve this and you can write assessments here and there and then every six to eight weeks you might choose to write a complete assessment about every subject and how they're doing you can write which ways they learn better whether they learn better hands-on or listening or watching videos or things like that workbooks or using the internet like all-in-one homeschool um, your weekly schedule you're going to want to create a weekly schedule and you're going to want to put that in your portfolio a daily log of activities like day one this is the date this is the time they're doing english they're working on pronouns the activities they're doing and then the time and math and the activity they're doing if it's working on their multiplication tables and watching Schoolhouse Rock. Um, maybe they're doing history and they're watching a Paul Bunyan video and you're having discussion. And that way you can keep a daily log. And if you do day one, day two, day three, and put the date with it and the different time and the different activities, you don't even have to count the days because it'll be automatically as you keep that log. Um, any tests or self-evaluations, if you do a, a test at the school, you're going to want to keep that in there as well. Uh, 
any volunteer work that they do. If you can get certificates or papers filled out for that, you might want to put that in there, especially if they're going to college. Um, if they're taking art classes outside of the school, you're going to want information on that and put that in there as well. Maybe you can get make certificates and have other people fill them out. Um, contacts with emails and addresses for school contacts and support groups, you're going to want to keep that in your binder or your portfolio. If you go on career study field trips, you might want them to create questions. And you might go to the hospital or a veterinarian, a dentist, hotel, factories, anything like that. And you can have them create questions about the education they needed, the skills they required, their daily activities, um, maintaining schedules, meeting deadline, problem solving skills, planning and organization skills. And you can see if you can record audio or video, and that will help the student to be able to have communication skills as they ask the questions or for interviews later. And you can have them write papers on that, and you can put that in your binder as well. So I'm hoping this helps people who are homeschooling, trying to come up with a variety of things that they might want to do to help their student. And if Saturday you're going to the YMCA for swimming lessons and you're going to spend a couple of hours at the library and they're getting library skills, you might want to create certificates showing that they learned the library skills or that you might want to count that as your schooling because they're going to the YMCA, taking yoga classes or whatever, that is PE. If you're Meal planning and grocery shopping, these are life skills, doing laundry that they're helping you with, that they're learning, and you might want to create certificates for those types of things as well, and put that in your daily log with your homeschooling for the hours that you're homeschooling, because these are skills that they are learning. So especially the meal planning and the budgeting and learning how to shop and create their menus and things like that, if you're having them help with things like that, those are excellent life skills i think and if they're gardening so you want to make sure you do the core subjects as much as they need to be done so that they learn them but you can throw in electives here and there friday in the afternoon you can throw in playing board games like categories and monopoly and or reading magazines that are science and history that you've got in the mail so that they have friday afternoon doing that or maybe wednesday afternoon you're teaching them to cook four days out of the month, four Wednesdays out of one month, you're teaching them cooking skills. And then the next month, maybe the four Wednesday afternoons, you're teaching them leather crafts or how to make candles or how to change a tire or how to check the oil or, or different things. You know, you can choose the electives to go along with your core subjects and make them certificates of achievement and throw those in your binder or your portfolio. So teaching them how to use a sewing machine, you know, things that they're going to need for life skills, teaching them how to take care of raising chickens and, you know, collecting eggs or that sort of thing. Maybe you're teaching them how to make jam and water bath can and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope that this helps somebody with their homeschooling. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Bye-bye.